In today's video, how much caffeine is bad for you? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video topic is about caffeine. For those of us that are interested in losing body fat, adding muscle, um, just being more productive human beings, caffeine has become an integral part of our society. I remember growing up, I was not allowed to have caffeine probably until college, you know, maybe, maybe my late teen years, 15, 16 is when I was actually allowed to start having caffeine. Um, and it wasn't really until I was 30 that I ever started drinking coffee. Now I have a cup of coffee every day. So the question begs, what is the upper limit for how much caffeine we can consume and not have some negative consequences? So the question came from my Instagram stories. So if you guys are interested in having your question answered, I'll post the question here that I got. So these questions are great because I feel like I can answer your personal questions one-on-one -on -one while also giving value to other people, okay? So let's first talk about the benefits of caffeine. So when you ingest some caffeine, we all know that feeling of euphoria, you have more energy, you have a little bit of fatigue resistance, mental clarity, stimulation. So there's definitely benefits to taking in some caffeine when you need to be productive, when you're going into the gym, improves workout quality. So if your training intensity is better, then in the long term, you're going to have better results, okay? So that's where we get the real benefits of caffeine. And personally for myself as a business owner, father, uh, caffeine is a great source of just energy in general. But you guys are watching this, you probably already know all of the benefits of caffeine. What are the negatives of caffeine? Well, as someone who has gotten caffeine intake quite high, probably over 2000 milligrams a day in my life, I will say that there does come a place where caffeine overload leads to things like anxiety, restlessness, and trouble sleeping. So why would I ever get my caffeine that high? Well, simple answer was I was very low body fat. I was sub 5% body fat and I'll post a picture up here. So I'll post a couple pictures here where you can see I was sub 5% body fat. Now, the reason was for a bodybuilding competition. So that was short lived. I did not stay in that condition long, but it does take a long time to get there. You see, you don't lose fat very quickly. The leaner you get, in fact, the more difficult it becomes. So caffeine plays a role in allowing me to perform in the gym when I don't feel my best, perform as an employee, father, friend, when I don't feel my best, to the point where at certain points of the fat loss phase, when I was very lean, I was pretty much always consuming a caffeinated beverage to help keep myself going. Or I would plan my day around, okay, I have to get a lot of things done. I'm gonna go have a very large cup of coffee and then go. So one thing about caffeine is that you build up a tolerance to it. So what two or 300 milligrams of caffeine does, you, does to you today, if you do that several days in a row, you, the results will start to taper off. So one thing I have had a lot of success with, and you might want to try this as well, is taking two days off of caffeine. Now, if I was to have no caffeine tomorrow, I would probably have a headache in the middle of the day. I find this to be very common. In fact, some of my competitors complain about headaches on show day, and I ask them if they've had their coffee, and they say no. So yes, keep your coffee in on show day if you're used to having some caffeine, because it will prevent that from happening. So instead, on the weekends, I only allow myself to have one caffeine drink. That's my morning coffee. And what I find is that allows me to kind of desensitize and get the benefits of taking my pre-workouts. Also, for anyone that I work with who is a client, and myself included, I try to reduce the necessity for stimulants as we're not in contest prep or as we're not in a fat loss phase. So if we are in a phase where we're working on adding muscle, I want to focus on reducing the use of caffeine so that when we are in prep, when we are in a fat loss phase, we have more bullets in our gun. You see, all the tools at our disposal in a fat loss phase can get used along the way. If you use all the bullets, if you start taking a ton of caffeine early in the fat loss phase, even though you're not really hungry and even though you're not really tired, well, when you really need them, they're not gonna be quite as effective. In fact, 
most of the fat burners and the fat burners that I recommend are not because they burn fat magically. You don't just take them. What a fat burner does is it allows you to perform at a higher level because you would normally be low energy. It also includes appetite suppressants. The one in core is so powerful that I actually forgot to eat a meal during prep. So that tells you anything. When you're dieting and you forget to eat, that means that's a good appetite suppressant. So yes, appetite suppressants are very good. They are also stimulants. So sometimes caffeine can help ward off hunger as well. So you can see how over time caffeine usage would get quite high. So it's one of the first things I look at after a long period of dieting is like, okay, let me come off some of this caffeine. And you'll start to definitely get some insomnia from being on it for too long. What is the upper limit that I would recommend as a coach? Well, I try not to get anyone over a thousand milligrams a day. However, I understand that's going to happen for some of us. If you can walk it up slowly, if you can start at 100 milligrams, 200, and then get to 300, the Mayo Clinic says that 500 milligrams per day is basically where we start to see some negative health consequences. I'll link that article below so you guys can look at that. But yeah, anywhere from zero to 500 milligrams, I feel like you're gonna be in a great place. Use it wisely. Try to time it with the times of day that you're going to need the most focus and energy, like a pre-workout, like being effective at your job, like being at an event that's gonna require a lot of your attention, and you should be good to go. That's gonna be it for me today, guys. I hope you're having an awesome Thursday, and I am looking forward to kicking this weekend in the butt, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.